we're gonna have a seismic survey done here. There'll be a little bit of thumping going on around again, right? Serious ground thumping to see what's really down there. Seismic for us is what we're hoping is gonna help us image the rocks to depth that other geophysical products don't do in these particular rock types. To be able to image these beyond the footprint of our drilling and see the extents of this network to depth is something I'm very, very curious about. What we do with surface geophysical is we have sensors and we have source points and we do all these sorts of measurements and it's very much like an ultrasound that uh, medical professionals would be using to image a baby. They have a very high frequency transmitter and they have a receiver and they move the sensor around the area that they're interested in and they do some real time imaging. We do very much the same with our geophysical. A seismic survey is gonna involve the application of a seismic energy source to the ground. And those energy waves will, will move through the ground as waves and but depending on the type of material that the waves are moving through, they will move through at different speeds. So the wave travels through the medium at a certain speed and it's picked up by a receiver on the other end, just a little recording unit that's gonna pick that up. We have a project that's generally about four kilometers wide by eight kilometers long. In that, we've built a grid that has source and receiver points. So we have 20,000 independent source points on this project and we have 20,000 independent receiver points. And at any given time, when we have one of our source points either vibrated or it's detonated with a small seismic explosive, we would have upwards of 4,000 channels listening to that. Little sensitive receivers that are like a telephone that are just anxiously listening for this. And then we would take that and we can start to build a picture of what's in the subsurface below us in terms of different horizons. Not only is our seismic source going outwards, but it's also going down about two kilometers, reflecting off all the different horizons. Every time there's a change in a horizon, we will get a reflection back up to surface. This is actually the first land-based three-dimensional seismic survey that's ever been done on Newfoundland soil, so that's pretty exciting to be a part of that. So I'm quite excited to see what comes of this data set because it really could be game-changing for a project like this. I have very high hopes that we'll, we'll be able to model these structures to depth, and as a geologist, to step back and see the broader architecture of the rocks below our feet is something that all of us would dream to have happen. And that's uh, what I'm hoping will come of this. And once we put together these 80 million data points we collect on this project, and we end up with like a volume, it would be a seismic cube of an area that's four kilometers by eight kilometers, and we can virtually look at it in any direction and we could simulate a seismic line every six meters along it one direction, six meters the other way, or we can look at time slices all the way down from the surface, all the way down the, uh, the full two kilometers we're looking. So it's a really high resolution survey we're doing here. We know where a lot of the major structures are, but we don't really know what they're doing on a smaller scale. So by, by applying the seismic technology to the ground to image the structure specifically, we can sort of trace out things that we can't really see right now because we're just using a drill core and a model to, to try and figure these things out. We have done a lot of testing up until now to make sure that we can see the contrast between our different types of sediments contrast through the, the structures of interest, as well as contrast against the mineralization being the quartz veins and the encompassing host rocks. So as long as we get differences between densities of the different components of the geology here, we should be able to image them with seismic. As we've evolved over time, we've been able to do much higher resolution surveys and get a much better idea of what's in the subsurface. And by doing that, we are now able to better target what we do at surface. We don't have something that points out to us that you've got something there. 
What we find are stratigraphic and or structural traps. So we find places of great potential. We know that we can find this quartz in and along where the faults are. We've got some very detailed models of those zones that occur at shallower depths, like what we've defined in the Keats Main Zone, Iceberg, Keats West, and we will get seismic imaging of those zones. So right there and then, yes, we will get a footprint of what those zones look like, and then hopefully look for repetitions and in those features at depth in the seismic data, which will hopefully point us to other areas of interest that have those same characteristics. We're very curious about what's happening at depth, and we've been trying to be very conservative, patient, if you will, to stay in that top 250 meters vertical depth to 300, and wait for that seismic data product to guide us when we start following things to depth. That's one of the real exciting things about it is that, you know, once we have these answers and we have a full picture of what's going on beneath the surface, that can help direct our drilling program quite a bit. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that finished product and seeing how it affects our approach to drilling moving forward. We should help provide a much clearer picture as to where the better migration paths might have been for the gold. It is an incredible form of technology and it's really exciting to be a part of this.